I remember him watching those games and, and how they leveled him. And, and the games have a way of doing that to people. He said a few things, you know, along the way. I'd like you to do this, I'd like you to do that. Especially when he was watching this 84 Olympics, because he hadn't been in the country in about 20 years at that time. Um, and that was kind of an emotional thing for him watching those games. I really thought to myself, you know, uh, with all the things that happened in his life, why he left that country, that it would kind of be something special if I could maybe bring him something someday uh, that, that was of that status. All it took was a television and a wide-eyed seven-year-old named Pavle Jovanovic to launch an odyssey. Pavle watched with his father as the world's greatest competition unfolded in his family's native Yugoslavia. What he remembers most is the raw power of the bobsled competition. And this, he says, was where the seeds of Olympic ambition were planted. I really thought that at that moment, I said, uh, that's something I'd like to do someday. So I, I, I think that that's something that I could strive towards. I don't know, it's just lingered in the back of my head. And I started, you know, from seven, eight years old, just going for runs. I mean, I, I looked at the way those guys pushed the one time and saw, you know, they're running for a short period of time applying so much force and so much strength, it was just mesmerizing. Born and raised in Tom's River, New Jersey, Pavle was like every other kid. He played hockey and tennis and loved to ride his bike and skateboard. He also learned the iron and steel worker's craft from his father at a young age. Those skills keep him busy when he's not training for competition. Early signs that he was a gifted athlete began to emerge. He was more confident in his body and developed a respect for exercise and nutrition. That dedication is what teammates admire most about Pavle. It all comes from his competitiveness and the fact that he knows that every little, th every tiny little thing he does is going to make him better. And, and as, an as an athlete and as his teammate, I love that about him. He's an athlete that I can depend on and he's someone that I, I like looking to my left and, and seeing him on there because I know he's going to get the job done and I know he's going to be a complete animal when he's, when he's doing that job. Anybody is, in, in any sport you're in could be a student to Pavle as far as what he does in training and his diet and just overall as an athlete. You know, I was always running around the yard, the backyard. Now I got a, my own push track in their backyard and weights all over the place. It starts somewhere at a pretty young age, uh, competitiveness or obsession with physique nutrition, whatever it is, uh, feeling good, running fast. You could get into the world championships towards the end of the season where you're firing on all cylinders. You're at your fastest speed, your best strength, and your body is at the utmost balance because of the therapy and training and diet and nutrition. And it just seems like you know, that's an addiction, just uh, feeling that that strength and that speed. Hearing the testimonials of those who know him best make it harder to understand what transpired just before the 2002 Olympics. Pavle failed a drug test two months before the Games. He received an immediate nine-month ban from the sport, dashing a dream that began in his living room in 1984. His teammates and his federation stood with him. Pavle appealed the suspension and wound up being penalized further. The ban was increased to two years. He sat at home while Todd Hayes, Garrett Hines, Randy Jones, and his replacement, Bill Schuffenhauer, won a silver medal. Pavle has had little to say about his band now, yet he maintains his innocence. A fire now rages in his soul, and his remarkable focus is on the future. Leading up to these uh, next Olympics 2006 in Torino, Italy, I think that preparation that I have Five years of past experience is really going to give me uh, an edge this time around. He, he's the bull of the team. I mean, he, he's got the he's got the strength. Um, he, he's deceivingly fast um, when you look at him. If you look at him in the weight room, and he's the guy throwing up all the weight. I mean, he's, he's totally dedicated to making his, his mind, his body, as best as it can be. You know, and you, you go to his house, you see this guy. He's eating organic food. 
You know, he's, he's using organic shampoo. Everything he puts on his body has to be all natural. His reemergence as an elite push athlete has kept Pavle on the top sled heading into 2006. He has teamed with Hayes, Schiffenhauer, and Messler to form one of the most dominant four-man teams over the past two years. It's been a long road, but Pavle has emerged as a role model for the next generation of aspiring Olympians. If my day in and day out uh, attitude or um, career can influence someone or motivate someone or be a ro role model in some way, shape or form, and that's absolutely fine with me. You know, you're always trying to find that diamond in the rough. There's, there's not many Pavle Jovanovics out there.